Hey guys, if you enjoy our videos and want to support the channel, please go and check our website out for some awesome TGS merch. So pretty much completely out of the blue a week ago, Beretta announced a completely new gun. No hype building, no nothing, just, hey guys, here is the 694. A few days later, it has arrived. And I really like it. Before we get too excited with the gun, here is the case. It's one of their premium cases with the cloth soft liners. You have a little toolbox with only one trigger adjustment tool. You have three spare chokes, Optima HPs, one spare pad, stock tool, Bretta oil choke key, and lots of plastic, um, as well as instructions and such. But it is a premium case, which is a nice touch. Anyway, no one cares about that gun. So before we kick off with a good overview of some of the cool new features they've got on this gun, it's worth a quick overview of the Beretta range. They kind of had a very similar setup for a long time. Went silver pigeon, and then the game line went off one way, and the competition line went up into the 682, which then became the 692. So you had a mid road level, and then there's a massive jump in any sort of decent technology, technological advance into your DTs. And so what they've done here is they bridged the gap between the 692 and the DT11 in the Sporter lineup, which is nice. And we're saying it's been a long time coming. The prices used to be a little bit closer together. They have changed a lot. And obviously you get more than you did early on. So I'm not gonna say anything about that. Let's move into the gun. Standard Beretta interchangeable pad. As we said, comes with two pads. The wood, they call a grade two and a half, but we would call it a fairly standard grade three. On this particular one, it's nice. It's a good representative example. Nice bit of figuring, some nice color variation, nice bit of fiddle back. Happy days. This is the first difference that we see, is actually the dimensions and the design of the stock. The pistol grip is significantly fuller. This is much more of a DT style pistol grip. You don't have that sort of more open style that you would have on the 692s. As such, fills the hand, brings the hand to bear a lot more, so is it sensibly, is that the right word? A bit more aggressively. Trap guns are lending a lot of their things into sporters and have been doing so forever more. And so actually what you get here is more of a trap feel, much more of a DT feel in the grip. Lovely palm swell, but you still retain that slender 690 action neck. And I must admit, it's really nice. It's really nice. Fills the hand perfectly without being too chunky that you can get on some other models from different manufacturers when they're trying to make a big heavy pistol grip. Moving in, you have a new top lever. You have a Kinks top lever. A la DT. Push that across and the action opens up just nice. Very exciting, isn't it? The safety is obviously manual with a standard selector there. And internally, the actual action trigger plate is a 690 trigger plate, which is, I hesitate to say, slightly better than the 680 action. It is slightly better than the 680 action, but it costs more money, so of course it's a little bit better. Moving up and around the headwork here, you have a very different design. Instead of dropping down to a point as they traditionally have done, they've rolled around and it's given it much more of a slender feel in the neck than they had, or at least a much more slender look in the neck than they had. A little bit reminiscent of a 725, and that really isn't unpleasant. In fact, I think they've done it a little bit better because you've got that little chamfer that comes out of the top there. And I must admit, so for anybody who likes game guns, you're gonna hate this. For anyone who likes sporters, I uh, like both, equally but differently, everything about this is a very cool, sleek, sporting shotgun. But that is a beautiful refinement. I'd like to see that dropped into all their other guns as well, because that's a real treat. I like that a lot. Anyway, so the action. You've got a very different action here, as you can see. It's a different shape. Uh, this apparently is to add a little bit more mid-end weight. I don't know how much mid-end weight it's going to add in the long run, but it certainly looks cooler and it is going to add weight by proxy of what it is. The forehand has a new detachment system. Instead of having that pull with it, and it has a push button. So you push that in, and you push the forehand off. And as always with 690s, it's a little bit tough, but not for the same reason as usual, because it's got a very different forehand attachment system. 
A, this is two parts. You have the catch on the front there that goes onto the front loop, and you have a second lump there that actually closes the draw between these two. This looks adjustable. Let's presume it is indeed adjustable. And you have a little roller in there that rolls around it, or at least pushes around it. It's a very interesting design. More importantly, this back part is now steel as opposed to aluminium, which is going to lend itself again to that increased mid-end weight. And then if you look at this design of the forend, it is actually sleeker than the 690s, which is kind of strange. Um, and you have a slightly different chamfer on the front there. It's nice. Uh, checkering wise, obviously laser checkered, and you have a very similar design curved corners around there. I just like it when people throw the old designs away and actually come up with something new. And this is, well, I say, it's still a 690 inside, but this is new. This isn't just a slight tweak. This is a, at a left field, we're producing a mid-level gun again, which is nice. Uh, this gun retails, by the way, for 3,200 quid. Uh, you obviously have the steely and polished barrels internally, so you should get fairly decent patterns. They are bored out at 18.6 HP tapered. You also have a different ejector system in these. Once again, uh, they've updated the ejector system and fingers crossed, it works a treat, but only time will tell. Again, they should be fine, really. <laughs> to add to the standard Beretta interchangeability, the actual front here looks interchangeable. So my guess is once this wears out, you can chuck another one in to keep it tight. But apparently the whole new design of the forehead is to keep that opening tension consistent for longer, which is nice. Uh, the rib is a 10 to 8 mil taper, a real slight taper with a single bead sight and two extended chokes fitted. The same sort of barrel system, same sort of rib system we've been using for a while. It's great, it works, happy days. Think about it, if they ever bring a 694 blackout, that's gonna be quite nice. Let's pop it back together. So the Sporter comes with two stock specs, a 3550 and a 3555. So there is two options available. Obviously, at the moment, with a fairly short supply, it's gonna get what you're given game. However, in the long run, obviously, it's gonna be a little bit easier to pick and choose what you like. Those two channels, when you actually pick it up, as much as they don't make a lot of difference apart from being aesthetic, when you pick it up, you actually have a much cleaner sight plane. And that cat sounds stupid, but actually on the standard where you have these larger rises and a little bit more light bouncing off them, it's marginal, but margins make champions, right? I like the tagline they put with it, the whole, let you be the human and let your gun be infallible. I can get behind that. This gun is, as far as I can see it, a really good, versatile sporting clays gun. They could have gone super heavy, they could have gone super macho, but actually they've kept it just restrained enough that you're not gonna feel like you're shooting a super trap gun. But you could take this out into any sporting clays field and shoot it. The whole top here is widened as well, and it essentially is kind of like a trap-esque stock from the start. Again, as I said earlier, a lot of trap features are coming in to sporting clays because the guys who are winning sporting clays are shooting trap style guns. But it's quite pleasant. It is quite pleasant. Especially seeing as they actually offer a little bit of cast on it as well, which is quite nice for a change. Um, so that wide comb isn't gonna push you too far offline, but does lend to a more aggressive cheek weld shooting style. So they reckon this gun overall completely, this sort of standard is uh, just under an ounce heavier and that ounce is sat in the middle. And you can feel that sort of rounded at its axis. As standard, it's a little bit front heavy. This is a 32 inch gun. However, it's ready for the BFAR stock weight. So you can chuck your 20 or 40 gram weights in there. Probably the 40 gram weight just to bring this back a little bit neutral. Overall weight, as I said, is seven pounds, 10 and a half ish at the moment. So you're gonna chuck that just over the eight pound mark, perhaps if you put too much in the back, but it is, it's nice. It feels, I think they describe it as racy. But I describe it as, just feels slick. It does feel very slick in the movement. I hesitate to say, because I always sort of deride people who say older Berettas are better, but it feels like an old school Beretta. It feels like a classic DT10 sort of, if you like. And that is no bad thing. As time goes on, I'm sure we'll find out a little bit more about them. They'll bring out adjustable comb versions. And well, we'll see, right? Guys, for now, thank you very much for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed this. She is a stunner. Take care. Goodbye. I'll see you next time.